What's going on, guys? This is Jailbreak Weekly, episode number six. My name is Justin Mack. Thank you so much for listening. Today with me, I have my co-hosts, Jarek Davis. What's going on, guys? And Andy Hoff. What's going on? So, uh, you know, it was a fairly quiet week in terms of uh, the jailbreak scene, but man, lots of stuff to report on the mainstream front. The main thing being uh, the iPod Touch 6th generation was released. Um, what do you guys think of this whole thing? And uh, can someone kind of outline uh, what the thing is packing for specs and uh, all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Uh, so, so basically, this is the first time that the iPod Touch fifth generation is uh, six. Of the, it's just the iPod Touch lineup in general has been updated since the fifth generation, and the fifth generation was released in 2012. So that's been a really long time, and it was worthy upgrade. So basically, what this upgrade contains is it now packs an A8 processor. Um, the the co uh, motion processor as well, um, upgraded camera, eight megapixels. This thing runs incredibly fast, great for gaming. In some respects, you know, graphics in in many cases are better than the iPhone six because it has a small display, still at four inches. Unfortunately, no Touch ID, but it's basically I would say the minimum that Apple did to keep this device updated. But with that being said, still very satisfactory. Um, yeah. Yeah, the the only thing I don't like about it is that there are two things that kind of stood out for me. The battery um, is only like a thousand milliamps or something like that, like, um, and it's only got one gigabyte of RAM. Right. Now, if you're making a device for gaming, because let's face it, that's kind of the niche market now that the iPod is appealing to is the the kids who aren't old enough to have iPhones yet, but who use it for playing their games. Um, wouldn't it make more sense to put in more RAM? Um, no, because no iPhone game actually needs more than one gig of RAM. Period. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. I just, I don't know, because, uh, in iOS 9, I've heard that the 6S is going to have two gigs of RAM now, so, I don't know. They could have set it up for the future, but then again, this doesn't look like a device that they're trying to make future proof or anything like that yeah they're just doing the minimum to keep it updated and you know people who are just like average ca- casual gamers mo- you know most likely kids they'll be fine on this thing it'll be a big speed increase and you know it also developers are able to access metal now which should make you know their gaming a lot better it's also 64 oh, yeah. bit i forgot to mention that and that's great for development oh, yeah. and just yeah. speed overall so basically it's like a small iphone 6 in many respects um okay. yeah. packed in the iPod. Um, and what's interesting is, I don't know if you guys saw this, but they actually skipped a number in the right. model number for the iPods. So they went from the 5, comma 1 to the 7, comma 1. The 6, comma 1 is missing. Um, oh. So either they're trying to be Microsoft, or there was a botched hardware update. Yeah. Um, yeah. That could just also be for consistency because that's what the iPhone 6 is using right now is uh, 2 is the 7 uh, at the start of the number. So that could just be for consistency as well. Yeah, I mean, no, I suppose, but... That's, that's yeah. not... It doesn't... The 6S... Yeah, so the 6 is the 7th yeah. because of the S things, yeah. weirdness. Um, whereas... The the model numbers are supposed to follow like each generation. Um, it's, yeah, yeah, I would probably yeah, say yeah. it was a you know a, an attempted update maybe, and then they decided to go against it. And you know, it's hard. It may seem easy, but it's hard to go back on these things once they're yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, which which yeah. may make sense why we've had a three year um a three year gap in between I, these as well. Yeah, and I mean I think it absolutely explains the three year gap there. I mean, I think this really just hints at that there was supposed to be another update somewhere along the line that, for whatever reason, probably, I mean, I'd imagine because they pushed more development towards the Apple Watch, but they just decided they didn't didn't need to uh, work on it at the time. Yeah. And take it from somebody who's owned, you know, who owns an iPod 5, like, th- th- this thing was super slow on iOS oh, yeah. 8 in particular. It was ridiculous. It had an A5 processor. You know, it's definitely worthy upgrade. I-, I won't be buying one because I have some other test devices, iPhones. But um, what about you guys? You guys picking one of these up? I really want to get the blue or gold in 128 gigabytes so that I can have a, just a device with every single song I've ever bought on it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Um. Oh, and see, another thing um, is 
with Apple Music now as well, that would be nice because uh, oh yeah, you can download a bunch of stuff off Apple Music. Um, and with the family plan, or not the family plan, with the whole um, Apple Music thing, like for your Apple ID, if it ties into your Apple ID, you can just download all this stuff. And then, you know, if you have a 128 gigabyte iPod just for music, uh, especially with iOS 9 coming down the pipeline here, that's going to be a lot of extra space. Yeah, that was actually my my reasoning behind purchasing one was for that specific purpose because all of my phones are 16 gigabyte. Yeah, yeah, me too. That's not quite enough for all the music I want. No, so... I do. I do a lot of streaming, so it's not too much yeah. of an issue for me. Oh uh, yeah, well that's because you you and your unlimited data plans down there. See, we don't have like I have five gigs of data. Uh, I'm a fairly heavy mobile user, so that five gigs can go pretty fast. So I have to be really careful about how much I stream. Right. Um, See, but I you're you you got it luxurious compared to me. I get two hundred megabytes a month. I thought you got more than that, though. No. No? No. I use Wi-Fi the majority of the time, so I almost never use any data, but... Okay, so yeah, I don't I don't trust uh, Wi-Fi hotspots really anywhere except at my house. Yeah, I don't um, in my house, so I mean, it's, it's not a problem. I work from home. I yeah. have one gig, and then after that it slows down to, like, edge speeds for the rest of the month. It's not okay. terrible. It's, that's awful, yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, it's horrible. not bad. I mean, at least no, it no, works. No, 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 that is, that is horrible. <laughs> Okay, to, if you I say so. Edge, no, so on my on way back, you, you listeners may have noticed I was gone last week. Um, I was in Montana. On my way back, we, of course, blew a tire in Idaho because, you know, worst possible place to get stuck on the side of the road is Idaho. <laughs> um, and, you know, of course, you know, they don't have LTE out there, I figured. Um, they also don't have just regular 4G or 3G. They're still using Edge. Uh -huh. And I contemplated just hurling myself in front of one of the passing by cars. It was horrible, horrible. Turned a twelve-hour drive into fifteen, and I was stuck on edge. Living yeah. on the edge, you know. Um, okay, so how much? How much is that iPod? Um, it's okay. So it starts at one ninety-nine. Okay. But there's, and, and you know that that's the sixteen gigabyte entry level. But there's, you know, you could get it in sixteen, thirty two, sixty four, and one twenty eight, and it okay. just goes up one hundred dollars. So, so respectively, each. respectively, it's actually um, for sixteen gigabytes, it's two hundred, uh, yeah. two hundred and fifty for thirty two, yeah. three hundred for sixty four, and four hundred for one hundred and twenty eight. Okay. It being an entry or just like an iOS device that you could buy at two hundred dollars. It's it's not bad at all, yeah. you know. It's just to get yeah. kind of get into the ecosystem, or somebody who doesn't want to get an iPhone. It's great to see it updated with all the latest yeah. stuff. Um, okay, so that iPod comes with iOS eight point four, correct? Yes, yes, it does. Okay, well, um, you know, it's interesting because if you're gonna get one of those, uh, I'd recommend getting it very quickly here, um, because interestingly enough, Apple just released the iOS eight point four point one. Uh, beta and apparently it uh, patches jailbreaks. Um, yes. So if you want to get one of those iPods before they get upgraded, because Apple does that, they don't all just come on iOS 8.4. Um, I'd get one ASAP. Yeah. And with that being said, you can jailbreak the sixth generation iPod Touch right out of the box with either uh, Taiji or PP. They both work fine, and it's pretty interesting because usually, you know, jailbreak tools need at least an incremental update for them to recognize a new device but you know for some reason I know it has a build a new build identifier as we touched on earlier but for some reason it works um, I'm yeah. not sure why but it's, it's great well speaking of PP um, they had also last week just released the uh, jailbreak um, for iOS 8.4 for the Mac so we finally have a Mac uh, jailbreak which is absolutely fantastic because um, for me, especially as a blind person, I've heard that these uh, the PP Mac jailbreak also works with screen readers. So that's um, absolutely fantastic. So, I mean, um, again, a lot of people could argue, oh, they stole Taiji's code. But really, all they did was port it over to a different operating system that Taiji hadn't done in the first place. Um, so it's kind of similar to what happened back um, with iOS 8.1.2 was it yeah I mean 
Yes, you can say that, but I mean, there's also kind of the counter counter argument of they are bundling their pirate app store in there, so they are making money on their store off of Taiji's code. Well, yeah, but that's that's a that's a practice that Taiji should have followed. Like if if Taiji had made a jailbreak for the Mac, um, you know, the jailbreak would have been there, and they could have made more money off the Mac because they didn't. PP took advantage of that. I don't think that's entirely. Um, unfair to tell you the truth. I actually, I find this to be a very interesting argument personally, uh, especially when compared to the history of jailbreaking. Um, let's keep in mind that Green Poison and Red Snow were both repackaging Lime Rain. So, I mean... Did they have permission to do so? I, I don't know. Nobody really knows. Nobody and has... the real question is, were they making money off of it? Uh, well, off of donations. There's always been right. donations, and I don't think people understand there are big donations that come in from jailbreaking. It's not little money. Um, no. And then also, uh, I Hate Snow. Many of his early tools were just... Right, like Snow Breeze. versions yeah. of Red Snow. Um, and that this was right. a common, common, common thing. Uh, for a long time, so it's kind of an interesting uh, argument to see that the community has almost turned on its former values. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely clear, I would say, in other circumstances as well, that, you know, Taiji, PP, and Pengu, these new teams, that they kind of have different, um, they have different morals in many different respects um, in terms of, you know, releasing jailbreaks and also, you know, just kind of the whole morality behind it in general. Um, so it's interesting to see where things are headed. Well, yeah. see, my, my thing is, is um, look, it's business, and business can be cutthroat. And right. PP took advantage of a mistake that Taiji made, whether it was a mistake or they intentionally didn't release it for Mac. Um, PP took advantage of something that Taiji didn't do. And if you're in charge of releasing a product, that's on you to cover all your bases, which, no offense to Taiji, but they didn't really do. I, I very much agree with Justin. Um, and one thing I'm, I'm interested to see is we, we currently very, uh, we classify all the Chinese teams together, but one team that, I mean, they haven't actually released a jailbreak so far, but they're planning to for iOS 9, the Keen team. I'm very yeah, interested yeah. to see what they do because they've been very much a part of American exploitation scene in other fields. Um, and I'm very interested to see whether they function more like the American jailbreak teams used to or more like the current Chinese teams or what's, you know, what's going to happen with that. I think we could be seeing a very interesting jailbreak cycle in iOS 9 because, um, you know, there may be some added security stuff. Um, Rootless hasn't been added, but that being said, it could be in future. Let's hope not. Um, but something that I find really interesting about Keen Team is, yeah, like you said, Jarek, they have ties to the states as well. And because of those ties, um, I have to think that maybe there'll be a really uh, good hybrid between, uh, you know, the Chinese style of jailbreaking and the American style, um, which I think in that case, everyone's happy. Because right now, a lot of Americans are saying, oh, I wish, you know, these American jailbreak teams would come back or these European jailbreak teams would come back. Whereas, you know, Chinese are just loving it right now. So I think, um, you know, we've seen two extremes um, where you have the American style and the Chinese style, but we've never really seen anyone kind of bridge that gap. And I honestly think that Keen Team would be um, very likely to do that. Yes, yes. And I mean, once again, a lot of people in the jailbreak community, they've never heard of Keen Team. Um, but people in the general InfoSec world, like me, know Keen Team very, very well. They are very notorious. They have done a lot of incredible work. These guys are oh, yeah. geniuses. Oh, so yeah, I know they're crazy. If they're saying that they've got a jailbreak, I have no doubt in my mind that they have it and that we will see a jailbreak from them. Did they say they had one, or did they say that they intended to release one? I'm just uh, blanking. Um, usually that means the same thing. Okay. All right. Looking forward to it. Yes. So, um, I think that pretty much covers all the jailbreak news. You know, of course, iPod Touch 6th Gen dropped. It's jailbreakable via Taiji and PP. 
And of course, we also saw the Mac release of the iOS 8.4 and 8.3 jailbreak via PP as well. So everyone's handled, you know, you could jailbreak. You could jailbreak uh, your your new iPod. You could jailbreak on any platform now. So um, that's you know it's it's all good. And you know we have the Keen team working on iOS nine, Taiji as well, possibly even Pangu. So uh, I think we're in good shape. Yeah, yeah, no, I think I think we really are, and I think um, you know the community at this time uh, last year was not nearly as active as it is uh, now. So that's definitely a positive. Let's hope that this, you know, activity can carry forward into um, the fall when iOS 9 drops, and hopefully uh, it can carry also into an iOS 9 jailbreak. Um, but so, Andy, we have uh, a jailbreak, but obviously the thing behind the jailbreak, uh, or the things, pardon me, are tweaks. Uh, do you got any new ones for us? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, there's been there's been various things released over the past, you know, basically since the jailbreak has been released. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to talk about a couple new ones that have been released, you know, very recently. Um, and you know, I guess let's just jump right into them. So the first one's Dock Bar for iPhone. This is, you know, uh, basically it's available in Cydia for 99 cents. And basically, what this tweak does is it gives your iPhone or you know iPad, iPod, whatever. It gives you a, a basically a dock on the right side of the screen. And basically, it allows you to customize certain applications to always show up there, and you could activate this dock with an activator gesture, and then you could just open up any of those apps. You could also scroll up and down on the applications, um, and it's basically just like an alternative to the app switcher, but the apps that, you know, the apps are basically configured to stay there, and they don't, um, you know, it's not like the app switcher in, in the sense that it adjusts. Um, so, so that's pretty much it. So on that, I'm, I'm curious to ask, do either of you know where this came from? Um, <sighs> Cole Schaefer. Uh, not not what developer where where this design and concept originated from. I feel like I should know, but you're asking the worst person with design in the world. So yeah, no. okay. So so interesting, interesting place. Um, would have never thought it would have come to iOS. Um, it actually originated in Ubuntu Touch. Uh, which really? is a very, very small, still not even out of beta mobile operating system that uh, Ubuntu is building. Um, that's their entirety of uh, navigation for switching between apps, is you just slide from the side of the screen and that exact thing pops out. And, and, you, uh, can, and you can configure which apps show up there? Yes, yes. Um, so I, I saw this the other day, and I this is a feature I, I very much like from... Uh, Ubuntu Touch, uh, I, I ran it for a short period on my Nexus, um, and I, uh, this was one of the features that I loved. Um, great feature, very useful. Um, so seeing it on iOS kind of really caught me off guard, but I'm very glad that it did come. Oh, nice. So do you have the tweak? Uh... I don't, because I forgot the name before I installed it. You know, <laughs> ADD oh, problems. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I mean, it, it definitely works very well, and you know, you can configure it to work with any gesture. But you know, you could definitely configure it for a swipe from the uh, side of the screen, so you can make it feel yeah. natural to you. I'd be interested to see how this works with voiceover. I'll have to give it a a, a go. But um, you know, and that's the thing. Like uh, Ubuntu Touch, um, you know, maybe, and you know, that's a really that's the beauty of jailbreaking. Like it's the best of all the operating systems that you can put onto your phone and honestly you know i i am really i'm a, I'm a fan of uh linux in general i think that linux is a really good um platform um so you know if this is helping to support ubuntu touch um you know and maybe make it a little more mainstream in its own little way then by all means uh props to this developer for sure yes yeah so yeah again it's uh cole schaefer um, you know, great job with the tweak. Basically, the settings panel, you just go in there, you can enable or disable it, configure your activator action, and configure which apps show up. There's some other small stuff, but that's pretty much the gist of it. And, you know, it, it works great. Nice. And nice. once again, it's, yeah, it's 99 cents in Cydia. What repo? Uh, I believe it's the, yes, the Big Boss repo. Yeah, we'll have all the tweak names and prices and developers in the description uh, of the, of the uh, video, yeah. 
So, um, I guess we'll just jump into our next week here. And this is Sir Doc, and that's spelled C I R D O C K. And it's from Brave Weeks. Yeah, it's, uh, I know that's true. Uh, it's from Braveheart. Um, it's available in Cydia for $1. And basically, what this tweak does is it gives your dock a circular effect. And basically, you could scroll in, in your dock, and it's this, caras- and it's this carousel. And you could scroll through various apps. You could add more than you know the traditional four. Basically, you could just launch these apps. Um, and it, you know, it works. I feel like there's been something else like this, though. Uh, but, but before we get into that, what do you guys think of this idea? I think it's a cool idea. Um, I think it's kind of just a retooling of the InfiniDoc idea, though, uh, yeah. where instead of it going in a rectangular motion, it's in a circular motion. Yes, yes, that's very true. I, I didn't think of that. I think that might have been what I was thinking of because um, it looked familiar. Well, you know what? Um, some people like rectangles. Some people like circles. So whatever yeah, floats yeah. your boat. For sure. Yeah, and you know the animation is very nice. It's kind of hard to explain. But um, you know, I mean, I guess it's not. It's just a carousel, and you could basically I'll be sure add. To take a look at it. Oh. <laughs> so um, basically, once you go into the uh, settings for the tweak, um, you could configure which apps you want to show up in your dock. Uh, there's two sections. There's enabled applications and there's disabled applications. Uh, you could add, you know, apps from disabled to enabled or vice versa. And something that's strange with this. This is just happening on my device. I'm not sure if it's specific to it. It's my iPhone 6 Plus. The apps show up in both the dock and the home screen. I'm not really sure why that is. Oh. Um, I mean, uh, maybe, maybe maybe that's a bug. Maybe I just need to. I don't know. I guess. Uh, inst- uninstall, reinstall. But I mean, I suppose you could just hide the apps in a folder. But I'm I'm not sure what's going on with that. But other than that, it, you know, it works great. That's just one small um, little complaint with this. All right. So we got a couple other tweaks for you. Um, so the first one is Safari Swiper. This is a free tweak. It's available on the Big Bus repo. It's from Sam Stone. And basically what this tweak does is, it's very simple. When you're in Safari, this tweak allows you to quickly switch between tabs that are open. Uh, normally you have to select the button in the bottom and then you know you just tap the tab. It's yeah. easy enough, but this basically simplifies that even further. And what you do is you swipe either left to right on the bottom bar. So you know the bar that has the back and forward buttons, you know bookmarks etc you just swipe on that area either left or right and it'll take you you know a, you know to the according tab either left or right um, and there's no settings in configure it just works I definitely this is definitely one of those things that speeds up your experience so what do you guys think yeah you know the one thing um, that I would say about that is I don't know if it would speed up your experience as much as you say because it's kind of funny. I'm not sure if you guys follow the Not Johnny Ive Twitter account on um, on Twitter or not, but it's funny because uh, he was kind of talking about something really similar. It's it's like a Johnny Ive parody account where oh yeah yeah um, I follow it. He was he was talking about uh, and if you are not into explicit material, do not go and follow him. Um, but it's it's interesting because he was talking about how you know he was ranting and raving about how. Uh, Safari tabs on the iPhone always insist on refreshing uh, when you go to a new tab, and he's right. So the one thing that really could slow down this uh, experience is if you know, you're know you swiping between tabs, well, each tab has to refresh. Um, That's and because, true. Because each tab has to refresh, it has to load the entire page. So I would love to see um, you know a tweak where the tab doesn't refresh and you can just go, like, there's a refresh button for the for a reason. Y- you don't need the tab to refresh. So if he, uh, you know, if Sam Stone, the developer of this tweak, or, you know, if another developer could figure out a way to make it so that you didn't have your tabs refreshing, um, I think that would make this tweak a lot more intuitive. For sure. And, you know, I think that, now that you bring that up, I, th- I kind of feel like there is something that you could do. I, maybe it's background, backgrounder or background refresh, because that allows you to, uh, basically configure apps to stay open and not close and you know to to preserve ram i'm not sure if that that you know app would have this effect but um it's you know it's something similar like you know when you open twitter sometimes it refreshes like background yeah. it allows you to fix that cuz you could enable it to always stay open even if you know ios tells it to close but yeah yeah and i'm not sure about that i'd have to play with that a little bit but anyways yeah, but yeah you, the, no, so the tweet's called safari swiper yeah even if safari yeah, sorry, open, those tabs just... refresh um, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. 
Jarek, what, what do you think about this tweak, Safari Swiper? Um, I, eh, I mean, it's cool. I'm not really something I'd use, but, you know. Yeah, 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 I know, it's true. It's just one of those things, you know. It's there, and it works, so there you go. Um, you know, I, I I definitely like it again. It just it helps the experience. I mean, with the whole refreshing thing, that's that's going to be there, uh, whether you have this tweak or not. So you know, it speeds it up. But anyways, yeah. you know, once again, we got Safari Swiper available in Cydia for free. So we got one one more tweak for you. This is Dath Banners two. There have been other version uh, versions of this in the past, but um, this is the updated version. It's available for free. Uh, it's compatible with iOS eight. Basically, what this tweak does is, by default, right after you install it, no configuration needed, it will turn your notification banners or lock screen notifications, um, it'll change the color of them to the color of the app that the notification is coming from. Um, so, for example, if you get a message, you know, obviously the messages app is green, so you're going to get a green notification. If it's from Twitter, it's going to be blue, uh, etc. So, I know, Justin, this doesn't really apply to you, but um, Jarek, uh, any thoughts on this tweak? Um, I mean, once again, kind of, it, it's cool. Not really something I'd use. It's it's more of a themers thing, I would say. Yeah, yeah and I mean, I, I really like themes, but I really like basic themes. Like, the entirety of my theme is just Iris. Um, that's, that's the only really visual changes to iOS I make. Because for somebody like me, where I use all the different platforms... If I'm using an iOS device it's because I want the iOS experience, not something else. Um, right. But I mean I do I do know like like many of my friends who jailbreak, they do it so that they can have a completely different experience. Um and their phones don't even look like they're running iOS anymore, which is cool for them. They love it. And these kind of tweaks are awesome because so many people love them. But for me I'm just I'm too basic. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely hear you. You know, I'm kind of like that too. I you know, only run a few tweaks on my daily driver, but um, you know, definitely. You know, if, if this is your kind of thing, it works exactly as advertised. Yeah. So, and basically, in the settings, there's you know various options you could configure kind of things to your liking and kind of take it a little bit further. But that's pretty much the concept of the tweak, and you know, it it, it does a great job at it. All right, so that wraps up our tweaks discussion. Um, of course, you know, as as the jailbreak cycle continues, this is something that we're gonna hope to throw in. You know, sometimes news kind of takes over, but we'll definitely try to throw in at least a few tweaks at the end of each episode if we have time. Awesome. Well, um, you know what, guys, I think that's pretty much uh, the end of our show today. Is there any uh, last final comments you guys want to add? We'll see you next week. So um, thank you guys so much for listening. Once again, my name is Justin Wack. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at CWAC. That's S33WACK. Oh, uh, yeah, and you can follow me on Twitter uh, at HoffAndy3. That's H-O-F-F-A-N-D-Y-3. You can also follow my YouTube channel, Ultimate Device Vids, on Twitter at U-L-T-I-M-A-T-E-I-D-E-V-I-C-E -E -E, at Ultimate Eye Device. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at CleverPone, C-L-E-V-R-P-W-N. I've been there for years. Just come find me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, once again, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you may be. All right, peace out.